motion moved. Motion moved. Let's see, Arun Jaitley, Andhra Pradesh, LOP. So I rise to support the motion moved by the Honorable Minister for Telecommunications, sir. So there are many occasions uh, in our democracy where the collective conscience of this nation is shaken by improprieties and misdemeanors, where public confidence in our system itself gets shaken. Needless to say that this was one such occasion where the nation wanted to know the entire truth of the matter. There are many ways of investigating that truth. One could go in simply for a police or a CBI investigation and try and find out the truth. One could hold the people on trial, which indeed in any case would be done. One option suggested at some stage by the government was that under the supervision of the Supreme Court, an investigation can be carried on. There have been instances when commissions of inquiry have also been appointed. What was there, sir, in the subject matter this time? That even if these parallel procedures, whatever be the width or the limitations of their jurisdiction would go on, the parliament itself could not abdicate its responsibility to discuss and express an opinion over issues on which matters of formulation of policy, implementation of that policy, a possible loss cost to the exchequer, and virtual outsourcing of the decision-making process of the government into certain hands had taken place. Mr. Sibyl, sir, arrived when he said that we must try to approach this issue on a non-partisan basis. It's not in that sense uh, an NDA or a UPA issue. It's a case where a policy formulation has been in the process over the last 17, 18 years. And therefore, we must seriously look at where we went wrong and where correctives are required. But, sir, when I heard his opening comments, I cannot hide my disappointment. There was an inbuilt rationalization of what happened in 2007-2008. What happened in 2007-2008 can happen in any other country in the world. It can happen in Finland. And in Finland, they don't send people to jail if this happens. Ooh. And therefore, nothing wrong if somebody in 2007-2008 did this in India. The entire focus, and I must say, Mr. Sibyl used uh, his skills of advocacy and oration, his experience as a parliamentarian, by just rationalizing 2007 as having found some precedent in Finland and could only draw support for it by saying what happened in 2003 was also wrong. The effort appears to be to somehow taint 2003, try and bring a moral equivalence with one of the greatest misdemeanors of what happened in 2007 and say, well, everybody seems to have done mistakes, so what if somebody in 2007 committed a mistake? That's the best defense for what happened in 2007 that my learned friend can offer. So this is one case where I said the other day also, the telecom is one sector post opening out which has actually been a success. But I cannot the reality that the manner in which we had a parallel going on where some people in charge of the governance and policy formulation at some stage at least converted this success story into a scandal. And that's the complete story of the telecom revolution in India. So I believe that the opening out of the telecom was a correct decision. The government which decided it 17, 18 years ago, the present prime minister was then the finance minister, it was a correct policy decision to take. 
our dependence only on public sector for providing telecommunications <coughs> had put a lot of burden on the public sector itself. Our teledensity at that time was only 0.8%. You had to stand in a queue for years altogether before you could get a telephone connection. There were inefficiencies, there was absence of competition. The services in due course of time would have become extremely costly. But the government which decided in 1993-94 to allow a public-private partnership went wrong in the formulation of policy in 1993-94. And I don't think it was a deliberate mistake. We were new to that experience. And therefore, in the hidden trial system that we followed at that stage, we opened out, but we thought that perhaps <coughs> Whoever wants to enter the field should necessarily pay to the public exchequer a very large license fee. We thought we are allowing private players and it's necessary that the state benefit out of them. Little did we realize that this large license fee would not come out of private pockets but would immediately be transferred to the consumers. And the effect of this was that we started opening out with a telephone call costing 32 rupees a minute. Obviously, at 32 rupees a minute, the original policy which was formulated, we could never even imagine that, understand that this, this is going to be a success in any way. The teledensity increased very marginally. There was a second problem with that policy. The second problem was that the government then decided that we must only have duopoly. That is, we must have two players in every circle. So while we opened it up for public-private partnership, we only allowed two players per circle and not a larger competition. Now this led to a consequential problem. The service providers were unable to pay the license fee. The service was not expanding. Our public sector companies, MTNL, BSNL, were the third players. Their presence was restricted. Restrict objected to on the ground that there is only two players, how is the third player coming? And therefore on account of excessive litigation coupled with these two limitations, the opening out of the sector itself was not achieving results. I ordinarily would not have referred to it in the NDA UPA terms, but I cannot help it after Mr. Sibbal's uh, opening comments. In 1998, when the government, at that, the new government assumed office, this was the ground reality that the government was faced with. You had a limited rollout, a very costly service, huge number of litigation spending, and sector not expanding. And people would have come back and said, well, let's go back to, again, the old, only the government will do this business, that regime. The then government started taking decisions. It is possible that somebody may have an alternative view on a policy. But an alternative view on a policy is not necessarily a malafide view, just as I said, the 1993-94 view on